Hi, this is Dave Raffo of Evaluator Group. Thanks for joining us for this video insight. I'm here today with Eric Herzog, VP of Business Development and Evangelism and Global Channels for IBM Storage. I think most people in the storage world have seen Eric speak either at IBM shows or industry shows. So uh, he's no stranger to this audience. So welcome, Eric. Great, Dave, thank you very much. And love to always talk to the Evaluator Group. So we're here today to talk about IBM Spectrum Fusion HCI, which IBM formally announced in the spring and is now it's just going GA in the third quarter of 2021. So this is part of a Spectrum Fusion platform that is new, uh, but it consists of technologies that have been for around at both IBM and Red Hat. So the, the Fusion part of Spectrum Fusion is aptly named. Uh, Eric, can you start off by giving us a rundown of you know, what's in Spectrum Fusion ACI? Like, what exactly are you fusing here? Sure, so with Spectrum Fusion ACI, uh, what we did is we took three of our battle-hardened pieces of software that have been around for years and turned them container native. Then what we did is we combined them into a single piece of software. So we took our Spectrum Protect Plus, which does backup solutions for both virtual environments, physical environments, and Red Hat and other container environments. Our scale out spectrum scale, which is ideal for AI, big data and analytic workloads and our spectrum discover technology, which allows you to create giant catalogs and indexes of metadata for files that works not only with IBM's spectrum scale and our IBM cloud object storage, but EMC, Isilon, NetApp and any S3 object store. So it'll all fuse together into one container native piece of software. And then with the HCI part, what we're doing is delivering it as a hyper-converged appliance in Q3. So you'll get the compute, you'll get the server, you'll get the networking. And then in Q1, we'll deliver it as software defined only. So you'll have two options at next year, but for this year, it'll be just as a hyper-converged appliance with all of that software container native ready to go. Um, and an option for Red Hat. If you're already an existing Red Hat customer, then you've got Red Hat licenses. If you don't, you can get it with the appliance as well, all tightly integrated and focused on hybrid cloud deployments, edge core and cloud, and big data analytics, of course, and AI applications from an application perspective. All right, great. So, um, you know, it's HCI, as you mentioned, it's, it's the architecture is an x86 appliance with storage, compute, some virtualization, but this is not uh, your typical VM-based HCI, is that right? I mean, this isn't something that we think of as far as like Nutanix or vSAN or VxRail. You know, what are the use cases and, and the target audience for Spectrum Fusion HCI? Sure, so as you know well, the HCI market is a pretty mature market, roughly 12 billion in revenue, but what's different with us is we're leading with containers. The other solutions lead around a virtualized environment while well, virtualization is important. By the way, we do support virtualization because we do support Red Hat's virtualization manager. So you can use virtualized applications and workloads with Spectrum Fusion HCI. But our big differentiator is leading with containers. From an application workload and use case perspective, also when you think of most of the HCI environments, they're very focused on traditional workloads, right? block workloads, databases, highly transactional. With Spectrum Fusion HCI, because of our incorporation of Spectrum Scale and Spectrum Discover, we're actually leading with applications built around AI, big data, and analytics, which is very different from the other HCI appliances that are virtualization-based, but also are really not focused on the, these giant scale-out infrastructures where you're talking petabytes to exabytes of actual data sets that would be used for those workloads. Okay, so we hear a lot of talk about container native and, you know, a lot of this traditional storage products at, at the evaluator group we call container ready because they, they use CSI drivers to connect to con their storage to containers, but they're not really built inside of containers. They don't run as a container. So, you know, how did you containerize spectrum scale? Is this more than just the CSI driver support? Yeah, so we've had the CSI driver support. We actually started doing, before there was a CSI spec, with Spectrum Scale, we actually supported containers before there was a CSI spec. Then when the CSI spec came out, Spectrum Scale, Spectrum Virtualize in our Flash system, family of 
and the main, you're running the mainframe with Linux, all of them supported the CSI specification. In the case of Spectrum Fusion, what we've done is they're fully container native. IBM is a giant storage software company. And just like other software companies want to use containers for the microservices capabilities and all the advantages container offers to software developers, we're a giant software company. So A, it allows us tight integration with container environments, be that Red Hat, VMware, Tanzu, or the roll your own Kubernetes environments, because they're all container centric. And B, it offers us the own advantages of being a development platform now for us, where we're container based. So our own software is container based and delivers us the advantages that containerization delivers to any software developer, whether that be a corporate developer, or in our case, you know, obviously an open market developer selling our solutions to uh, other companies. So that's why we went container native was the integration with the container platform beyond what CSI does and B, the value it brings to us on our own development cycle to make our development better, faster, less bug prone, all that are benefits of containers from a generic software developer perspective. So we get the benefits of both with this, with this container native Spectrum Fusion version. So uh, how much work have you had to do with Red Hat to integrate its virtualization, uh, you know, most importantly, OpenShift into Spectrum Fusion? Uh, well, we've already been working with Red Hat way before IBM ever thought about buying the company. You know, way back when in 2010, 2011, when Red Hat was a tiny little company with their little trade show out in that hotel in Boston, IBM storage was there way before the company decided to buy them. So we've been doing integration in the old days, obviously with Red Hat Linux distributions, and now with the OpenShift environments, um, even again before IBM bought them. So we've continued to do that. So in this case, we didn't have to do much. Once we made it container native, we just did some testing with Red Hat OpenShift in their container platform. We've already done some existing integrations. We have what we call the IBM storage suite for cloud packs. Cloud packs are an IBM product that are fully container based. So we've already had a lot of our software sitting with that storage suite for cloud packs, which again, use OpenShift. So all we did was once we did development, we just had to do a little bit of testing. We didn't have to do a lot of tight integration because we've already been doing that now for a couple of years in the container space with Red Hat. And what about how will Red Hat licensing and, and support handle be handled for this product? Uh, so when you get it, when you've already got the licenses from them, we still handle them the same way. Obviously this product, as you, most of our products are is heavily through the channel. So if you buy Spectrum Fusion HCI from an IBM business partner and the Red Hat from IBM business partners, many of which already were Red Hat certified before the acquisition, then you'd still follow that support model. If you buy it direct from us, we've got an agreement where we work together with them on any support and service issues. And again, the licensing would depend. If you've already got licenses through OpenShift as a corporate account that's buying direct, you would still do that. If you don't, we can sell it. And then of course you'd call us up and we would take care of it. So we've got options depending on whether you're buying from us directly and already a Red Hat customer or not a Red Hat customer. And then what you do when you buy from our valued business partners. So there's also a, a software defined storage version of Spectrum Fusion coming out. It's on the roadmap, uh, I believe for next year, but why start with the turnkey appliance? So why did you think you need to get that out first? So we've done that traditionally. Spectrum Scale originally came out with the Elastic Storage System. And then we put Spectrum Scale as a as an, you know, software defined storage. Spectrum Virtualize, same thing. It originally came on our StoreWise and our Flash System products. We now have Flash System only got rid of the StoreWise product line, but after a couple of years of being on the arrays, we then pulled them off and sold this software to find. So the same development model we've done with Spectrum Virtualize and Flash Systems, Spectrum Scale and the ESS, now we're doing a Spectrum Fusion with HCI and then Spectrum Fusion as software to find. So it's been a proven model that's worked for us, particularly for Spectrum Scale, which is heavily software defined. Uh, we do sell a little Spectrum Virtualized software defined, but most of it goes out, as you know, as a flash system. But on the software, on the Spectrum virtual uh, scale side, excuse me, a lot of it is software defined storage. So the model's proven out effective for us. So that's why we did HCI first. So um, you know, most of the HCI products on the market now have three node minimums, some on the edge or even less than that. Uh, Spectrum Fusion HCI has a six node minimum. Uh, why is that? So we're starting with six node and actually in the coming version, which will be either at the end of Q4 or beginning of Q1, we're also gonna take it to 
three. So you want to get something out you. There's some uh, tweaking and honing we need to do to get it down to three, but we're already in process of doing that. Um, because as, as you mentioned, we're going GA actually on September 17th. So it's in the order system today. An IBM salesperson or an IBM business partner can place an order. The actual first shipment is due on September 17th. So because we're that close, we've already been working on shrinking the six, minim, six node minimum to a three node. And that will be either um, probably after Thanksgiving or it'll be the very beginning of Q1 of 2022. So the spectrum scale is formerly GPFS has been around for a long time as a uh, scale out file system, uh, you know, even before, you know, containers or wasn't running containers. So, you know, how, how did you simplify management of spectrum scale to put to inside of spectrum fusion? So it was a two step process. So the first thing, when you look at spectrum scale over the last three years, we've dramatically eliminated the command line interface that was common with GPFS. So if you look at just, Spectrum scale today, lots of, lots of it's been put into a GUI, wizards all over the place for installation, et cetera. So we already were doing that. Then what we did when we did fusion, we took scale, discover, spectrum protect plus, fully container and aiderize them. And we actually made a single management GUI framework, which manages the whole enchilada. So not only were we already making it easier to manage spectrum scale over the last three to four years, we actually now have made Fusion, a single management framework instead of multiple management frameworks. So I've got one way to manage all of them when you're doing a backup of a container, when you're creating a, a giant file repositories you're going to use with containers, or whether you're going to use um, the discover aspect, the, the capability of creating the metadata cataloging and indexes, you also do it from the same GUI now. So a single GUI to manage all of the, what used to be three separate pieces of software fused into one, one GUI now, Dave. So what else can we look forward to on the Spectrum Fusion roadmap? I know this is uh, more than just the HCI product down the road. Well, obviously the near term thing is clearly what we're gonna be doing uh, with the software defined storage version. We will do as we've done with all our software defined storage uh, capabilities, we'll provide at ibm.com a support matrix of here's the storage, here's the storage rich servers that it works with. So you know, same thing with operating system specifications. So you know exactly what how to put the thing together. We do that already spectrum scale. We do that with spectrum virtualized. We're gonna do the same thing. So that will be out over the year, we'll add more. So as you know, we usually start with two or three servers like we do with spectrum scale. Here's what you do. And now there's like 10, 15 different servers. We'll do that. Um, we do have an option with the current spectrum fusion for HCI with NVIDIA. So you do have an optional GPU that you can go with. So as they continue to push their GPUs forward, as they move to the next, every time they move to a next generation, that will be the new option for Spectrum Fusion in the future. So that's where we're going with it. Clearly, we see the world being very much built around this new era of really big data, analytics, and AI. Um, we do, by the way, support core edge and cloud. One of the unique things we've done with Fusion, whether it's HCR or the software defined, is we put in a local caching mechanism. So for sake of argument, if the actual files were sitting on the core data center and Dave, you were accessing it from the cloud and I was accessing it from the edge, you would think the data is sitting in the cloud and I would think it was sitting at the edge. So you have this unique um, caching infrastructure we put together so that wherever it's truly stored, if it's really out in the cloud, the on-prem or the edge people would think it's literally on-prem or at the edge. So that's something we've done unique and we'll continue to to hone that technology, but it's been very, very effective. And feedback from the betas was they couldn't really tell the difference even if the data literally was in one of the other three locations. So we'll continue to add more and more uh, stronger cloud support uh, and any other type of deployments for the edge that we've already doing, we'll continue that. Part of the value, Dave, of going to a three node is there could be some edge and let's look what I'll call big edge. I am a global car manufacturer. My edge is actually factories, right? I've got a corporate somewhere, but my edge is really the factory. So part of what we're seeing is if we can go to a three node, something like that, or I'm a big developer and I develop these office complexes. So if I've got an office complex and I am basically providing power, cooling, security for you know 47 buildings that are in that office park and that's what I do as the developer, then that's again, another ideal solution for the shrunken down HCI with only the... Um, 
three node to start, start doing that is get aren't truly a cell tower, which clearly is an edge, or is not a refrigerator, which is clearly an edge. All the refrigerators are coming computerized these days, but truly something like a factory, which would need a three node, or clearly an edge like um, a giant, a, a large developer selling their office park and literally going to manage it after the fact. They've got to deploy all that stuff. And so a three node um, fusion HCI would be an ideal solution. So those are all roadmap items that are coming um, between now and the, fir uh, the end of the first half of 2022. All right, well, thanks for joining us today, Eric, ahead of the IBM Spectrum Fusion HCI launch. I think this has been very informative. Great, well, thank you very much. Always love hanging with the evaluator group. And I have to say this, because I know you're big sports fans, Go 49ers. <laughs>